Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Schwab Coaching for our next topic, Street Smart Edge, to think or swim. Order entry is the focus today. I want to thank you all for joining us. I am your host, Kevin Horner, joining you all from an exceedingly snowy Denver, Colorado today. I am lucky to be joined by my colleague and friend, uh, Schwab Coach Michael Fairborn. Good afternoon, Mike. How you doing, bud? Doing well, Kevin. Yeah, you got the snow today. We had it yesterday. <laughs> we, we got one of those more, traditional old-fashioned yeah. March Colorado storms where we get uh, a lot of water, a lot of precipitation, and uh, we got hit pretty good, about 18 inches overnight. Looking for another more than we got. coming the rest of the day today and tomorrow. Wow. So, uh, yeah, wow. spring break gets started a little early here for a lot of the kids <laughs> yeah. uh, in the state. Um, Mike, we have got a lot to get to today, and I'm excited to do it. We've got uh, a an opportunity to really get our clients and viewers here up to speed in order entry specifically relative to both Thinkorswim web and Thinkorswim desktop. You know, we have talked a lot with our viewers in the past few weeks here, Mike, and taken a lot of input from them. They tell us this is a topic that uh, is something they really need addressed as it relates to these Thinkorswim uh, applications. That's right. I'm really looking forward to going through that with you uh, today. You know, we had a bunch of questions even the last two, three weeks, specifically about order entry. And I think we can really hit off a lot of those, get to um, some of the conclusions and, and really answer a lot of questions that people were had been uh, looking for, specifically with today's topic. So looking forward to it. Yeah, as am I. And we're going to also kind of set the table here for you, everybody. So we're going to spend a couple of minutes off the jump getting you up to speed with a lot of the resources that are available to you at your fingertips uh, in both Schwab.com as well as Street Smart Edge. Believe it or not, we've be able, been able to create a bit of a transition for you there from the Street Smart Edge platform. So we're excited to kind of kick things off a little bit. Want to let you know this morning, or the, pardon me, this afternoon, we have two jo uh, coaches in chat with us today. So we are having uh, both Ben Watson and Lee Bull managing chat. We've been a little bit active in the chat of late. We want to just remind you, though, that the chat is an excellent chance for you to engage with us. What we want to also point out, though, is there's a, going to be a survey opportunity for you here in this segment. And so the survey is going to be an excellent excellent manner for you to utilize uh, to bring the, your needs to the table to let all of us know about things that are missing from your process a little bit, things that you're looking for perhaps that you need from us. It's going to be your best chance to get your voice heard. So utilize the survey for that. Now, as it relates to the chat function, our encouragement today is to utilize it for your specific questions relative to features and functionality on streets, uh, excuse me, on Thinkorswim uh, order entry or Thinkorswim order entry for web or th Thinkorswim desktop order entry. Or after we get through that in about a 15 to 20 minute window, we'd be happy to address the questions that are outside of that as well, as long as they relate to the platform usages. So that's really what we're striving for today. Now. Before we get into it, I do want to remind you of some disclosure details. So quickly, just the reminder, of course, that this is an entirely educational and informational process. Remember, uh, we're not here to endorse any particular strategy or security, of course. Uh, and beyond that, we'll simply uh, remind you we'll be working as we utilize both Think or Swim web and Think or Swim desktop applications, we will be utilizing paper money. Now, this is an excellent manner for you to utilize and get familiar with these tools. Paper money allows you the ability to place transactions, utilize the tool using a balance, uh, a, a faux balance, if you will, that can get you comfortable in navigation and usage of these applications and platforms. So we're excited to get down to it, Mike. Uh, why don't we jump in with quickly a heads up about some one more logistical item, which is our coaching page here, Mike. We have gone a long way. Now, granted, we had to start from scratch here back in November, but boy, have we done a lot of content and created a lot of content, and this is the page at which it is housed, our Schwab coaching page on YouTube. Oh, Mike, I got you on mute, buddy. There we go. Is that better? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, as I say, that's a great place to go. That's where all of our archived events are. So what we've really been doing from the beginning of this year till now, you can really find a lot of great content there. Kevin, just to echo your point, the playlists are a great way too, just to mm -hmm. go through a specific class where you can get uh, week after week, you know, for since the beginning of this year, topics that have been addressed. And we can see one right there with you there too, you know, uh, and <laughs> have them across all the coaches. So it's a, it's a great, uh, great resource. 
Yes, it is. And, um, you know, these areas for you to continue your ongoing education, everybody, that's really what this page is all about. Uh, subscribing to the page so that you can be notified when we are live and hosting the various sessions we do Monday through Friday. Great way to go about it. But obviously, for those of you looking to get better acquainted with these tools, the getting started with Think or Swim, uh, that playlist would be ac uh, excellent for you, as would the um, getting started or utilizing Think or Swim web. And then my last note is just to remind you that as we go forward in all of our live sessions, remember that all of us coaches are using this application, these, these tools as well. So you can learn a lot quite commonly through the tips and tricks you might pick up just through usage, uh, watching coaches do their education, for example. So please do pay attention to these classes. Look for your opportunities to not just engage, but ask those, those minor questions that might not be that you might think are minor. But believe it or not, they're probably questions other viewers and traders alike will have. So uh, just some reminders there. So, Mike, I'm going to bring up Street Smart Edge, and in doing so, I need to point out that I am on the latest version here. This is version 1.88, and what's notable about this, everybody, is that we have applied a whole new tab for your familiarity with Think or Swim applications, and that's going to be the platform transition tools drop down here. As you can see, everyone, we've got a number of quick hit pop-outs for you to utilize. These can bring you, for example, straight to the, the transition guide, for example. Uh, you can utilize the learning page that's actually a tool within Think or Swim desktop application. So there's additional detail provided in Edge giving you the chance to learn all you need to before we even get to the point of transitioning over to the Thinkorswim desktop suite. So keep that in mind, everybody. There's a lot at your fingertips, not so much so that as a new dropdown in our launch tools is the Think or Swim web application. So this is a good way as well to launch, load, run concurrently. If you have two monitors, for example, put Edge on one and put Think or Swim Web on the other. Now you can see both side by side and you can do maybe a little bit of work as you would every day, your day-to-day, trade-to-trade uh, workflow, for example, and then try and duplicate that on the other application. You're gonna take some steps to do that. It's not gonna happen overnight. We recognize that, but as a an individual who fought Quite a bit, Mike, the idea of making this transition over to Think or Swim desktop. I'll tell you, once I made the switch, I think the biggest jump for me was the recognition that I had no choice in the matter. So for me, I had to actually leap in order to give myself the impetus to really dive in and become a better user of the application. Is that something that you found as well? Absolutely, Kevin. Yeah, I found that you know a little bit of repetition, as they say with repetition, it's the mother of all learning. And just mm -hmm. going through it just a few times, you know, you really start to kind of resonate with what's, you know, what with what's on the platform. And that's exactly what these classes are designed to do, to show us those areas uh, where, you know, where people can find these things. But just like you said, just going to it a few mm -hmm. times can be really, really helpful. And I, I will say that when I started here, I was forced into it as well. So we both had that. That worked for me too, uh, but yeah, just uh, just a little bit of repetition, two, three times, you really get a sense of where things are, and there's a lot there on the platform. Yes, there is, and and I think that's probably the very first thing we get most consistently, isn't it, Mike? That wow, yes. there's a lot on the screen there, Always. and by myself, yeah. everybody, listen, I'll I'll acknowledge it. One of the nice things about Street Smart Edge is how you can absolutely take it to a, uh, a, a extremely low level, Mike. You can eliminate every tool and have only the banners at the top, for example, right? And then you can launch and load the tools you want. We're going to talk today around about the all-in-one ticket and how this looks like over in Think or Swim Web and Think or Swim Desktop. So let's try making a slow move, if we will, uh, in terms of what we need in order entry with Street Smart Edge using the all-in-one trade ticket here. The takeaway here, everybody, is the individual nature of this tool. Right? This is a tool that can be launched and loaded, held on a single monitor 
left open or easily accessed. And that's kind of similar to what's available in Think or Swim, both web and desktop. The biggest difference, I think, everybody, is the visual reflection of that. As you all know, you users of uh, Street Smart Edge, you're familiar with your ability to define a strategy on a given tab, uh, and you can do that through the drop down here. Uh, that's pretty convenient, pretty simple. And as you can see, everybody, when I'm on my uh, options page, I've got all the chains and details ready to go down below. If I was over on stock and ETF, I would see my current bid versus ask. I'd have the uh, executions going off along the right-hand side. And Mike, while it doesn't look like this, at least not verbatim, of course, aesthetically, when we shift over to Think or Swim Web, which we are going to start with, and then we're going to kick it over in a moment to Think or Swim Desktop, Mike, this is essentially, though, going to give us all the same detail and information. It's just a matter, I believe, of knowing where it resides. So Mike, all I've done is launched and loaded uh, the Think or Swim web uh, application here. And over on the left, I have selected the trade tab. The other note I need to make, Mike, before I toss it to you here quickly is just that we're on paper money. So let's always make sure we're on paper money when we're in our learning phase, everybody. But Mike, I have clicked on the trade tab. Talk to us a little bit about what we have at our fingertips immediately. Oh, absolutely, Kevin. And I might have missed it. Uh, the URL is just trade.thinkorswim.com. You might have said it. I'm just not yes, sure. Yes, I did it's, not it's... say that. You're absolutely right. And the only reason I forgot to mention it was because we did a launch straight from Street Smart Edge. Exactly, uh, which from is so the, cool to have there. Oh, yeah. excuse me, the um, launch tools. Yeah, I agree. It's nice to have that, right? That's a quick little absolutely. Uh, Quick access for a lot of us. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. I'm back to think or swim web application here, Mike. So again, we're on the tab for trade. I have Caterpillar in the window. What are some of the details that I have at my fingertips here that we want to utilize perhaps? Yeah, so initially, yeah, so up, upper uh, portrait of the screen in that box, find the symbol. That's where, you, you know, you could throw the symbol in initially. And it's, so it's really quick, easy to use up top there. Once that does get filled in though, you can come down initially and th there are some quote details that initially will pop up that does that does provide some information about the company that you have up top. Uh, of course, you have the option chain down below as well, mm -hmm. specifically for options. Um, but as you move on down, uh, you can see that you've got other areas within the trade and you've got down there uh, actually even a chart that's showing up at this point Oof. in time. Yeah. Uh, with that, um, first of all, you know, anytime we're placing a trade, before I move down too much farther down the page, upper right hand corner of the screen is where we've got the buy and sell. Mm -hmm. And so if we wanted to place a trade initially, <clears throat> those buttons right there are very, very helpful. Just clicking on that exactly will establish the, the order entry dialog box right down below that can be reviewed. Yeah. So that's, a, yeah. that's a, an initial. Um, Quick point to note before we get into some other details there, Kevin. All right. So what I liked yeah. about that is it's very easy to find, right? It's in the right. upper right corner. It's for sure. red for sell, green for buy. That's probably going to stand out to a lot of users of both applications or all trading applications, I would think. Uh, as you will see, everybody, this is very much in line with desktop, uh, Thinkorswim desktop version as well. The, the detail down below being um, and notice again, as soon as I, I'm going to click off of that, but if I hit buy, you get a little pop-up window, right? And then get all the criteria that I want at my fingertips to make my trade details. And what I want to point out here quickly, everybody, before we get into some of the, the you know, more uh, uh, notable detail that a lot of people have asked for, is that you can also apply contingencies and one cancels other bracket orders right here, Mike. This again is a shift that we've been able to make to bring these types of orders, uh, order entries are available in Think or Swim Web, are available in Think or Swim Desktop, but Mike, they're also available on Schwab.com. And the reason I bring this up is that we recognize that Thinkorswim Web and Thinkorswim Desktop may not be the application that you want. So I just want to mention there has been a, a lot of improvement in Schwab.com as a trading application that has given you access to the traditional trader tools like contingent orders and one cancels other orders, Mike. Very important step. 
Absolutely, Kevin. Y yes. And so you'll find that same, like you said, on, on Schwab.com, you've got that same functionality. You've got it obviously, obviously on uh, the platform as well. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's on desktop platform, but it's nice to have it here on the web too. So if an order does get placed, there are additional ways to say, hey, maybe I wanted to try to present an exit somewhere at a particular level. Yeah, that's totally available to you right off the web as well. And so a lot of that same functionality is I'm just looking at it here. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, so orders can be placed there. Uh, as we move on down to Kevin, uh, within that spot, well, I guess we could go through maybe the section where we're looking at uh, the next step to place in that trade, which would be the review after we put a trade in, there's okay. a review section to take a look at the yeah, box. Yeah, we can do that. Let's, um, in fact, I've yeah, got, um, cool. let's take a look here. I've got a position in Apple already. We've got 50 shares. I have another working position in uh, Caterpillar, I believe, in this account. Let's take a look at it by going to our positions page. So we have an option position on in Caterpillar as in our example portfolio, just something to look at and monitor and then we've got some shares of apple we can do um let's go ahead and do a quick order entry for a small position to add caterpillar underlying stock as an opportunity and the reason um, we're going to do that is just to mention a couple of key points the first is you if you want to make adjustments everybody to your order defaults you can do that via profile up here in the upper right corner. This is important because by default, if you're an option trader, uh, by the way, you'll notice we shows you here, stocks limit, you can define the order type you wanna see. Do I want it to be a market or a limit order, et cetera? You can define the share amount, kick it over to options. I have de changed this from 10 contracts down to one. Some of us might want that five, but the point is customize this to the level you want and define your order entry as well. That will work to aid you in your process of order entry. It'll speed that process up a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and do a quick order on Caterpillar. We will do a traditional buy. Mike, before we do it, I just wanted to point out down below though, as I scroll down the screen, everybody, while I have the chart here, and of course I've got all my settings details and I can maximize the chart if I wanna see more, if I wanna see um, some of the details associated with my potential option trade, I can do that also. But um, the details that I was looking at were active trader tab, level two tab, and time and sales tabs. So Mike, there's just another opportunity to see some additional criteria and additional information here uh, that um, is a little bit more than what you're gonna get from Schwab.com, but maybe a little bit less than what you might note in desktop thinkorswim. Right, Kevin, it's a little bit hidden, isn't it? It's just off of the right-hand side there. It, so, but it is nice. It's it's right there. You you will get you know some of that information right off the desktop as you mentioned too, uh, desktop platform. So we've got that available too. You can see time uh, trades during the day and just another way mm -hmm. to place a trade under that active trader too. Uh, if those buttons aren't uh, big enough for you, I think they're pretty big. But uh, hey, there's another there's, <laughs> other, there's other places to do it as well. What I do like too at the bottom of this page, I mean, you do get the charts as you mentioned. Uh, you do get news that is specific to the company that you're looking at as well. So I love that. Mm -hmm. So it's like specific news. Hey, what's come up recently? And you can actually scroll on down and you know get uh, quite a bit of information there as well. But uh, a lot really on one page, Kevin, if you think about it, it's just a matter of just scrolling down and uh, tapping into that all on literally that, uh, that trade page. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, Mike, let's do... Now, Mike, what about moving away from uh, think or swim web and looking at think or swim desktop and trying to place that same trade there. So I'm going to bring over think or swim. Here we go, everybody. Now, initially, the biggest takeaway that I think many of you are going to note is that right off the jump, this doesn't look as large. Uh, and when I mean say large, I don't have the font size as increased. One of the things I did there, Mike, when I was launching and loading Thinkorswim Web, you know, I've got that little trackball on my mouse and I can hold the control button down and I can play with the size of Toss Web, Thinkorswim Web just by moving the trackball larger, so up to make it larger or down to decrease the size. Notice my zoom function here, everybody. So you can play with that a little bit, okay? You know, you can do the same thing in Thinkorswim Desktop, Mike. But first, before we get into trading, can you talk to me a little bit about making minor changes like that in Thinkorswim Desktop? Where would we go about those changes? Yeah, absolutely. In, in terms of uh, the actual trade itself. 
thinking about font size and, and oh, just trying size. to make this maybe visually a little larger for some viewers if they needed to, because by I think by default, sure. the size can cause can cause a little issue for for viewers and users as well. It can. And there are some there are some things to consider. Things don't fit on the page exactly the same, but it, you can see them more clearly. So absolutely. Kevin. Mm -hmm. Upper right hand corner of the screen just under setup there. Exactly. If we click on that, just application settings right at the top line there. Exactly. Okay. And then under the general tab, there's a lot of a lot of info there, and it's going to be under the look and feel. All right. Oh, okay. So here we've got my color scheme associated with it. I, I've defined it already, as you can see, everybody. But there's also some uh, areas here where traders, maybe in Street Smart Edge familiarity, might like to see something a little more customary for them. Exactly. Yeah, there's quite a bit there to, to select from, and you can you can select those, take a look at it. You can apply the settings and just see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to your black background. I'm beginning to like it I more know. than my light. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're winning me over a little bit here, but uh, absolutely, yeah. Well, it's really, it, there's a lot of set, uh, settings there, too, on the size, if, you know, just to make it easier on your eyes as well. And the whole, the whole platform 100%. font will adjust to you when you select yeah. that, too. So we've got a number of things that can be done there. As you can see, I'm on the large font, but you can kick that up to larger or very large, even extra large. It will impact the real estate available to you, everybody. So bear that in mind as you make changes like this. But uh, I do think it's important to know that those are changes that can be made. They can be implemented. And for visual reflection, why don't we just do this? Let's change this to S uh, SSE Lite. This is what it would look like, everybody. I have a feeling some of you users out there would appreciate the, the application giving you the visual look of Street Smart Edge, for example. Um, you might like that. So take a look at that. Give some, some thought to it. Uh, again, I'm a believer in having an application that looks the way you want. I think that, uh, that the, the, the display colors, the settings, et cetera, if all of that is customized to your liking and familiarity, it really creates a comfort for you in usage. And I think that uh, for me, when I was learning my process, I think that was the biggest thing. It's, uh, yes, I spent time going through and doing the same steps over and over so that I could really get comfortable with those steps, like adding studies, adjusting adjusting studies, so on and so forth. But for me, uh, it was very important to make sure that aesthetically it looked like an application that I was very familiar with. And that made my comfort day to day a lot easier. So hopefully uh, that's something you all take away as well. Mike, let's utilize uh, that trade tab up above. We're gonna, now I do wanna point out everybody, we're not in the same application here. So my Think or Swim web, it would normally be communicating with Think or Swim desktop, but paper monies do not. So uh, keep that in mind here, at least as I understand it, the, my applications are not the same, so my orders are not the same. Now, Mike, if we go over to the trade tab here, I think the first thing that we often hear is how people are looking for the information that they have at their fingertips in all or one trade ticket in Street Smart Edge. Now, if you're looking here, I have added Apple to my trade tab, Mike, down below, we've got the traditional statistics, but these are the option details, option specifics, and option um, time and sales and so forth. I've got access to everything at my fingertips, but it might be more than what I'm looking for here, Mike. So what, can we bring this down to a level that might make a new user a little bit more comfortable by giving them the, the basics of order entry on a, a trade page here? Yeah, absolutely, Kevin. So once you first select it on the trade tab, so up top, we've got the symbol box, right? So you've got right. Apple Crown in there. Exactly. And the first area is somebody that just is getting familiar with the platform. Their focus would be on the underlying. So just right below that, that is the underlying stock itself, uh, where we've got the bid, we've got the ask, a number of you know details, a number of columns there. Uh, but um, so we can we can enter a trade very easily just by clicking on the price under the ask, for example, that would pull right it there. Up. Um, okay. Yep. That puts the oh, order yeah. on. Yeah. And, and by the way, those, those additional statistic, that, like the columns that we have up right now, the uh, option statistics, um, if we click on the arrow, uh, just to the left of it, it, that will, that will shrink that down, uh, excuse me, for the uh, option statistics. 
Okay, there we go. There Sorry. we go. Yep. No, no worries. And that way you just have a real basic format. And by the way, you did click on underline, which is perfect because now we're getting that some of that same information that we saw in TOS Web, Thinkorswim Web. Mm -hmm up top as well about the company. But because we did click on the ask price, and by the way, there are several places throughout the site because we're dealing with the software platform to, to put in order entries here. But uh, with that, it did put the order down below. And you can see it's a very similar order, looking similar to Toss Thinkorswim Web. Mm -hmm. Down you've got the buy, it's very clear. Uh, one thing, too, that I'll do, Kevin, to just kind of make the screen a little bit bigger as well, is there's a little arrow that separates that left-hand column uh, from the right-hand side. Exactly. Uh, and it just makes it really straightforward. You're just looking at the trade tab only at this point in time. If you want the fuller screen and more more information might fit in there, now we can actually see, you know, it's 25 shares as opposed to uh, – or well, if there's if there's not enough space, you won't actually see that number. So that can help if you have a larger font size that we raised earlier. Yes. So, yeah. So you Very got that. And by the way, you can show how to adjust it. That's awesome. So you get that functionality. So there's a lot that can be done in here throughout all of those, Kevin. But that's the initial steps, you know, to getting that that first order in place. You got mm -hmm. the confirm and send down there as well. Did you want to take a look at maybe some of the contingent orders as well, Kevin? Yeah, I think so. But I also want to evaluate um, some of the details associated with options, because one of the things that Street Smart Edge, I think, does a nice job of doing uh, is providing very clear detail for option series prices. Uh, and I think that initially, when you look at this, this can be a little bit like, oh, well, how come I'm not seeing the option detail? Well, the reminder is that just about every header you have at your fingertips is something that you can create a little more clarity from. Let's talk about that. I'm going to open up the option chain by moving the caret to down position. Now I'm going to click on where it says non-standard. What that means is it's asking you, what type of options are you looking for? Non-standard would be those that would have deliverables other than the normal 100 shares exclusively. So this would be adjusted options, options that have portions of shares plus cash in lieu and et cetera. Some traders don't even wanna see that. So they would designate show me only regular options. And as soon as I made that change, everybody, I hope you noted, then I'm getting the series of options available to me under my Apple designation. So one of the other things I've done is to keep this very tight. I've only got four uh, option series or four strikes showing. I'm gonna change that to 10. And then I'm gonna push down once more the order entry tool. But I'm gonna point out, yes, the order entry tool is hidden, but it's still there. It's right down there in the lower left, everybody. You're just a click away. It hasn't gone anywhere. It's there for you. So if you're working through your series of various options um, of, available to you, strikes and months, et cetera, good way to do it might just be to work through each one and just note, here's your carrot, open the carrot. Now you can look at that chain. You can kick that down, move to the next one. All right, I need a lengthier time, all right? But if you're looking at it saying, well, what about all that other detail? And I know you are because we get a lot of questions about it. Well, what about the stuff like, uh, I don't wanna just see last change. I wanna see theoretical pricing. How do I play with that? Well, let's change it to theoretical pricing. And then notice it gives you the criteria to play with here. And I'm bringing this up because I didn't even recognize this initially, or even maybe the first three, four days I'm trading on this tool, everybody. Once you get to the spot of realizing that just about all of these are uh, tools that you can customize or alter, then it's going to encourage you to click on them and, and find out what that means. So here we could look at Apple, kick it forward to tomorrow, or let's look at that. Let's see. Um, here, let's do this. We'll go to the week out from today, so or from tomorrow rather, eight days for expiration. And if I thought that Apple was going to drop by $5 between now and uh, next Friday expiration uh, to approximately 173 and change, then, and it would notice this as I'm suggesting this happens tomorrow the 15th, I'm going to get that theoretical price noted. And again, theoreticals are just that, those aren't noted, those aren't guarantees in any way, shape or form, of course but they are ways that traders might get an idea, Mike, as to potential move and what the, under, what the underlying stock might need to do in order for me to get what I'm looking for out of my option. So Mike, these 
criteria in here are very important and very easily missed, unfortunately. Yeah, Kevin, I think you just showed just the, the depth and the extent of detail uh, that you can get within the Thinkorswim platform itself. So just, just some of the capabilities are really, uh, really extensive and can be really helpful for those individuals that are, you know, specifically looking at, you know, uh, trading frequently or looking at options in more detail. Oh, I thought absolutely. That was a good review. Yeah. By the way, there yeah. was just a quick question on how Go you're ahead. opening those windows and closing those. And it's just a little carrot or the arrow off to the left there that Kevin's clicking. Yeah. Exactly. Just right there. Yep. Now, Mike, Stop if them. we wanted to do, again, just like we showed with the order entry on the underlying equity, if you know you are on the option series you want to do and you are ready to be a, a trader, the reminder I have to give you is to be thoughtful about the colors associated with the order. And what I mean is if I clicked on the ask price here for this um, March 172.50 call, it's going to bring it up as though I'm a buyer. That's the default. You click the ask, it's going to be a buy. If you click the bid, it's going to default to sell, and it's in red. Now, that is notable, everybody, because I have made an attempted transaction and been rejected immediately. Thankfully, the platform gave me the heads up. Yeah, that's not a trade you're approved for here. Um, it, but I bring it up because it's easy to miss, and so be aware of that. And remember, of course, every one of our order details down below all are – drop down available to us, right? So very important details to take away from that as well would be uh, the reminder that I wanna offer here. Um, Mike, let's do one of those um, contingent orders. Let's do a buy in here. We'll do a smaller one, uh, with a a, but a buy with a bracket, similar to what our traders in Street Smart Edge are familiar with. But I wanna do it not from the order entry screen, because one of the things I've learned, Mike, in using Thinkorswim Desktop is yeah. the ease of order entry from your chart window. And the reason I say that is as a user of charts, a frequent user of charts who's looking at charts all day long, one of the process for me has me saying things like, all right, this looks like I'm ready to place the trade. And when I am, Mike, rather than going to another tab altogether, some traders might load that, that trade page on another monitor. Some might just want to do a right click and do it right from here, which can be done with as something as simple as buy custom with one cancels other bracket. And so by clicking that everybody, what I have just locked into is essentially that same order we tried with Caterpillar, which is buy the stock. We can designate our entry order, whether it be a limit, market, any preference. We get to define our time frame, and then we're gonna follow it up with a profit order for exit above the existing entry and a stop order below the entry, okay? So that we can build this plan out, recognize this is what we're stepping into, here's our profit opportunity and here's our loss opportunity and we're gonna lock in. One of those two things is gonna happen after we buy it. So uh, it's one of my favorite things, Mike, is to immediately incorporate those exit strategies. And knowing that we can do that the same as we did in Street Smart Edge is very, very helpful to a lot of our traders. It really is, Kevin. Being able to just you know, put the trade in in advance and know, hey, these are this is kind of what I put in place. This is what I was seeing before I put the trade in. And having a, a reference to that is really, really helpful because those orders, you're probably going to get to this anyways. But once we submit those orders, confirm and send, you'll be able to track uh, those contingent orders uh, very easily just in the monitor tab as well. Yes. So it does or keep even, yeah. even on the chart window if, you, if it's your chart preference. Window. That's right. So um, let's, yeah. let's uh, touch on a couple more key points here in order entry. And then I want to make sure that we get to a couple of questions in the queue. Uh, I would love to hear uh, from Ben and Lee, which ones may be taking the lead, so to speak, in terms of importance for those viewers in here today. Uh, a couple of main points. Number one, make sure that you're you, you might not see it as well, and I'm a little colorblind, so this red on black st doesn't stand out as well as I'd like it to. But make sure that you are – uh, linking these up, everybody. This way, when you do change your order criteria, if I increased my or decreased my orders, my share amount, so I'm going to go ahead and put in 15 for Apple. Now it's populating my exits as 15 as well. So that's just that little symbol. Make sure that's the white one there. And you can do the same here 
with your order entry time frames as well. So we're on a day order. I'm going to change these good till canceled. Now, what I'm going to do is just widen this out a little bit so I can see that price. I'm going to place a buy limit for just the 15 shares. We're not going to worry about building a trade per se. We're really more focused on placing these steps for you all, everybody. So we're going to do a buy entry at, let's just say, 165 even. And we'll look for profit of five points to the upside. So we'll call that 170 for limit. And how about something in the neighborhood of a dollar and a half to the downside so that we at least fit a proper risk versus reward. And that's about a dollar, uh, 163.50 for a stop. Okay, so we've got a buy order for 15, subsequent sell, five points of profit, subsequent sell stop, $1.50 of loss. We hit confirm and send, and of course, it's imperative we read the detail here, everybody. We love to do that. That's of major importance. So make certain that you're, what you're reading is what you got, or what you're looking for, rather, and then we'll place and send. And then now, we have the original order entry. That's the green in, in limit to buy. And then uh, we have the subsequent, again, one cancels the other. So only one of those, the limit sell or the stop sell can execute. We can't overdo it, which is, um, you know, can be a little con concerning. You don't want to sell more shares than you have. So uh, that's a nice yeah. reminder of uh, what the OCO bracket can do for us, Mike. Yeah, and it's so nice to just be able to see those right on uh, the chart tab, or the charts themselves, because you can see what is there. And uh, I love the fact too, Kevin. You know that you can you can drag and drop those around different levels too, right off the chart. If you wanted to change those levels that you were looking at a at your limits or your stops or whatnot. Oh yeah, like so I can take this my pointer, point it on the uh, the limit trade, and I'm going to just lower it and say, you know what? I don't like that entrance at 165. What if I, instead I wanted to enter at 163 and a half, and then have my adjustment after the fact uh, on my sell stop. Notice here, it just moved it, and now it's saying, is that where you want it? Yes, put it at 163.51, sure. And then it made an adjustment, Mike, to my original stop, too. And it made it by the same amount that I was willing to give up there in initially. So that's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It is cool. So it's a great reminder of where your stops are as you have mm -hmm. these stops, because you could say, oh, I've got a stop here on this stock, and maybe you want to adjust it, and you know, you're getting all that right off the chart as well. So it's a great order reminder as well, Kevin. It is. It is. Mike, um, you know, we are already at a point where we have covered an enormous amount and haven't had the, nearly the opportunity to get to as many questions as we wanted. So I just want to point out, um, everybody, make sure to look in the notes for this segment. Those notes, of course, are in the expandable section right beneath the video itself here down below. Uh, we have a number of links in there. There's some scripts in there to, uh, to take care of some business that you might be looking to add to your Thinkorswim desktop application. What you want to know, of course, is that those aren't guaranteed for their accuracy, but uh, they might be helpful in providing you some of the details you're looking for. Uh, one of the other things that we've added in there are uh, some of the links to the playlists from the Schwab Coaching channel, so you don't even have to go to the channel to uh, locate them. You can jump in here right beneath in the messages uh, and take advantage of that as well. I did see um, a request maybe just to get a quick snapshot as to the layout of the chart. And it's one of my favorite things to highlight, Mike. You know I'm in a daily chart commonly, but I've got a four grid setup here, but that's not what everybody uses. It's just what works for me. Uh, for me, it's simple because I move through a daily chart into a five minute bar, then into a 15 minute bar. And then my last one here is a week long bar. And I can play with those at my discretion. But one of the things that I know some traders need access to is something like my S&P sectors uh, page, which is a pretty good one, I think, at least. Now, this, again, is just, you know, a way for a trader maybe to get a quick snapshot of how the market is acting any given day. And, uh, and for our purposes, Mike, does a really nice job of highlighting the open source nature of Thinkorswim Desktop, not just for charts, but my reminder is that this is available for many aspects of this tool. Yeah, and I really love what you did with this, Kevin, because it, it's 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 you know a chart that's set up that you've totally you know uh, created yourself. It's tailored to what you want to see. Uh, that could be sitting on a separate monitor uh, along with whatever other charts you might be monitoring throughout throughout the day. But this is specific to sectors, and what a great way to have sectors pulled up 
just sitting on a chart, just with full functionality and whatever capabilities you want, whatever charts you want to have tailored uh, to the things that you focus in on it. You, it's right there at your fingertips. So yeah, it's right there. Yeah. And, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'm using uh, my, my grid page here is 12, but as you can see, everybody, you've got access to as many as uh, 32 on a single page. And again, the, the so-called cheat that I was employing was just maximizing the cell and then using the click through arrows. So here I start on, on the SPX and by the way, they all stay the same in terms of what they're showing me because I've got all of them set up with the broken chain. So the D link access, if you will, so that whatever symbol I put in there stays and then I can just navigate through my various pages. So, um, you know, it's a pretty good setup for me when I need it. And more than anything, the important thing, Mike, is that I save it and have it accessible at a moment's notice. And then when I need to go back to my other ones, I can do that real easily just by going to my my normal single stock with intraday and saying, yeah, relaunch that. And, and again, utilizing these detach functions uh, very commonly will allow uh, our users to get the information they want placed where they want. And Mike, I know you love how when you move tools around, once you close out the application, it relaunches with those tools loaded where they were. Right. It, it is software. So it does have, it remembers, you know, what you did last. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so all those settings will be in place there for you, which is really great. Um, and then also, Kevin, I just, I, I love how you're going through this and, and just showing everybody because, folks, if you do what Kevin's going through, doing in, in a lot of these steps here, just going through that same process, it's actually very easy. It's just that repetition that he's going through and you really get a sense of what capabilities are there. If you go to it, you know, two or three times and just check it out, you just start to remember these things. And there's just a lot there that we want you to, to have down and be able to tailor it to what it is, mm -hmm. you know, the way that, you know, some of the tools that you look at and the ways that you like to trade because the, the platform certainly does have that uh, capability. It does. And I think that's really the reminder, Mike, what you hit on. You use the term repetition. And ultimately, that's going to be your friend here. Uh, it must, it's likely not by design, but for me, going through the process of updating my studies and creating the, the color schemes and the styles that I like and want to use, that process, doing it over and over and over so that I get it all done the way that I want, was so instrumental in building my confidence to utilize this application, Mike. It was big. And so my reminder Sorry. to you, everybody, is that I am a new user of both Think or Swim Web, Think or Swim Desktop. I too was a user of Street Smart products since day one. Street Smart Pro, for those of you who've been around long enough, then the transition to Street Smart Edge, loved working with Street Smart Edge, and I am equally excited to have access to Think or Swim Desktop and utilize it every day, all day. It is the application that I use. Now, my hope is that we accomplish some business for you all today. We highlighted the ease with which you can place your trades in both Think or Swim Web and Think or Swim Desktop. Did we get to everything? Unfortunately, no, but that's okay because we're going to be back for you here. One of the best benefits you have at your fingertips is the Schwab Coaching Group, everybody. Make sure that you take a minute to create some survey details for us. We have those pinned to the chat. We want to hear from you. So all those details that are things you're looking for from your Thinkorswim desktop application, these are things, this is the place to do that for us, okay? That's what the survey is all about. Reminder that those get read and reviewed frequently. We will absolutely be excited to get that feedback and be able to incorporate with our production team as well. So take a moment to like the channel, subscribe to the channel. Mike and I would love your follow on X as well. So you can do that for us coaches it's our first and last name followed by cs so at kevin horner cs at mike fairborn cs we've got at ben watson cs and at lee bowl cs in the chat i want to thank them today as well so thanks to all of you for sticking with us today participating in the show make sure you check out the other playlists available to you and revisit more we want to have you back everybody we're going to continue this and we'll keep building for you so thanks for being here have a great evening everybody we'll see you again real soon